In this lecture, I continue with the resume check example, this time for demonstrating the use of the loop expression type. Like the case expression type, the loop expression influences the flow of the business rule. This expression type allows us to iterate over some piece of logic to get a desired result. The loop expression is very similar in its look and feel to the rule set object. So you can also consider this lecture as an introduction to rule sets. The similarity between them comes from the fact that both objects make use of sequential processing of if-then constructs, which are actually rule objects. This lecture, I want to modify the check resume business rule such that the result will not be a table, but a simple text summarizing the final result of the check. I want the text to indicate that all is good in case the check result is positive. Otherwise, I want the text to indicate that the final result is negative. And also, I want the text to include the number of failed parameters. I will start by creating a new result object. The result I want is of type text, so I can simply use the default settings and only completing the text. This was the easy part. There is still the top expression part to handle. But I don't want the loop expression to be the top expression. You will understand why in a few moments. I want to use the loop expression as a mean to count all failed parameters. Remember that we have total of three parameters in the overall check. Number of pages, mentioning of volunteering activity, and mentioning of high education. Each one of them can fail the check. And if a candidate has many failing parameters, then he or she need to know that they will need to invest more effort next time. So the indicator of how many exactly failing parameters are there is important. I will create the loop expression as a standalone object inside the application. As with almost every expression, the loop expression has several modes we can work with. First, I need to set the processing mode. There are two options, whether this expression returns a value or it performs some action. In this example, we want to return a value, which is the count of failing parameters. Next, I have to choose the loop mode. Things are more interesting here. Those options should be familiar to the ones of you who ever took a programming course. Either way, their names are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to delay on each one of them. Once you know how to use one of them, you basically know how to use all of them. I think the most common loop mode is the one called for each entry. In this mode, the loop expression scans a given data object of type table, which may be the result of some expression. For each one of the rows in this table, the loop expression performs a specific logic which is defined as a sequence of rules. I will use this mode as I want to scan all lines in the result of the dummy decision table I created in the previous lecture. I can now specify the table which I want to scan. In my example, this should be the result of the decision table, so I will just choose it. Notice that each line in this table 
is a structure containing a text field and a boolean field. I can, if I want, specify to scan only lines that match a specific criteria, but I don't have to. Next in line, I need to specify the result data object like in all expressions. This expression should return the number of the failing parameters, so I will create a new data element of type number. Good, I have done half of the work. The loop expression will scan the table, but will not do anything spatial. In other words, the counter will remain zero. For the loop expression to do any meaningful calculation, I need to add some rules. This is the part where it becomes very similar to how you use a rule set object. If you remember from the building blocks lecture, a rule is an object type in its own right. It is an if-then construction that enables us to perform operations depending on some criteria. Luckily for us, both the loop expression and the rule set enable us to handle those rules in a very convenient way, so you will not feel that you are working with different objects. To add a rule, I need to click on the Other Operations button. Three options are available. Again, I will not demonstrate each one of them as they are very similar to one another. I will just mention shortly that exit condition lets you exit the loop if some condition evaluates to true. The continue condition lets you skip the current iteration straight into the next iteration if some condition is true. I will choose add rule. Because rules are independent objects, I have two options. I can choose an already existing one, or I can create a new one. In most cases, it is recommended to create the rules straight from the loop expression. A pop-up window jumps, in which I can define the actual rule, and not less as important, I can also give a short description of what this rule does. I will give this rule a description so it is clear it is intended for counting failing parameters. Now for the rule itself. Assigning a condition, I have three options. Use value range bases the condition on some data object or expression. The actual condition is specified inside the rule. We use the SELECT condition option whenever we have boolean expression or data element which we want to act as the actual condition. The third option is simply a forward navigation option to create a new expression which does not yet exist. In this example, we want to count only failing parameters, so I need to base my condition on the boolean field of the line. Although it is boolean, I will not use the SELECT CONDITION option as the result would be the opposite of what I want. Contemplate a bit of what I've just said to make sure you fully understand the meaning of the SELECT CONDITION option. I will choose to use a value range based on the boolean field. Good, the criterion is in place. Now I need to maintain the then part. If the parameter is a failing parameter, then I want to increment the counter. How do I do that? With the help of a formula expression, of course.
The result of the formula should be the updated counter. This formula is a very basic one. I need to take the value that already exists in the counter and then increment it by 1. Fairly simple. I will activate the formula and return to the loop expression. See this red message? This tells me that the result object of the formula is not in the context and therefore cannot be used as a variable. But because the counter data element is also the result of the loop expression, I can manually set it as the variable to hold the result of the formula. I can add as many rules as I want to this loop expression. But in this case, I just don't need any more. So I will demonstrate an operation of adding a rule and immediately afterwards an operation of removing a rule. That's about it with the loop expression. Let's activate it and return to the function. The function is still top expressionless. Recall that we want to return a summarizing text. The loop expression alone is not sufficient. I will create a formula expression that will make use of the loop expression. If the check result is positive, then I want to return the string all is good. Otherwise, I want to return the string bummer with the addition of signifying how many failing parameters are there. For that end, I'm going to use the if logical operator. This operator has three arguments. The first is a logical expression which can be true or false. The second argument is whatever we want to return if the logical expression is true. And the third argument is whatever we want to return if it's false. I'm also going to use the concatenate operator so I will be able to concatenate several strings together. Look carefully while I finish the rest of this formula.
Nice! I will activate the formula and return to the function. The function is also ready. As usual, I will activate it and do some testing. I will try some options and see what happens. Well, this is absolutely good news. The function works as it should, and we have learned how to use the loop expression like pose. Now that we are done, I can tell you that I could get the same result using the table operation expression using the count operation, but I wanted to show you the loop expression. Besides, if the counting would have done using different weights to each parameter, then the table operation wouldn't be enough and using the loop expression would have become a must. I think we can move on.